This is for the ethics review class at Parker University. When a chiropractor is purchasing expensive equipment, x-ray machines, signage, uh, some of the other treatment equipment or diagnostic equipment that's available, one way to purchase that equipment without paying cash up front is to enter into an equipment lease. Now many times equipment leases work out okay, but sometimes they can result in some problems for the uh, chiropractor. Now, I want to review the situation to make sure you understand how an equipment lease works and whether this is the best way for you to finance purchases. Essentially what happens is one company makes the equipment, but there is a different finance company that's actually providing the funding. And the problem is when the salesman or the manufacturer have made unwritten promises, or even when they've made promises in writing, uh, if the salesman or the manufacturer don't honor those promises, the finance company still expects to be paid. Uh, so even if there's a breach of warranty, the equipment doesn't work the way it's supposed to do, the finance company still expects a payment. So here's the gist of the uh, structure of the transaction. The salesman goes to the buyer and says, look, we have this great equipment and it's okay if you don't have enough money to pay up front for this equipment because we can work with a leasing company and enter a leasing agreement. So the salesman makes some outrageous promises sometimes about what the equipment will do, how reliable it is, how substantial the manufacturer is, uh, how great the warranty is. But then in reality, here's the way the system works. The buyer is going to receive the equipment, not from the salesman, but from a manufacturer. And that manufacturer may have no idea of what the promises were that were made by the salesman. The buyer is then going to send their money to a finance leasing company. The leasing company, at the beginning of the lease, the leasing company will pay some real money, goes to the salesman and to the manufacturer. Salesman usually receives a commission. The manufacturer should probably receive the bulk of the money. But that's real money that's going out of the finance company's bank account. In exchange for that, they've got your promise from the buyer to make monthly payments. So what happens if the equipment doesn't work? Usually the first thing that's obvious is the salesman is nowhere to be found. Promise, the salesman has made promises. Maybe they were exaggerations. Maybe they just flat weren't true. Uh, whatever the situation, the salesman's not around to help fix the problem. Sometimes the manufacturer is still in the picture. And if the manufacturer is a substantial company, they will at least honor the warranty that they made for the equipment. But sometimes the manufacturer has also gone out of business. So uh, uh, particularly with some of this equipment that chiropractors buy that's uh, uh, I'll just describe it as unusual or off the beaten track. It comes from a manufacturer that's not a very substantial company, so when they disappear, there's no warranty. Uh, there's no salesman. And if the equipment's not working the way it's supposed to be working, how does that affect the buyer's obligation to make monthly payments to the finance company? Bottom line, bank still wants to be paid customer is still going to have to make those monthly payments to the finance company, even if the salesman lied, and even if the manufacturer has gone out of business and the equipment is entirely worthless. That's simply not a defense to the claims by the finance company. Those equipment leases are written carefully so that the obligation to pay the finance company does not depend on the honesty of the salesman, does not depend on the manufacturer's honor of the warranty. So that may be a situation that you want to be aware of. And if you're dealing with something that's somewhat unusual, you may want to stay away from it.